Hello, my fellow modeling and tabletop gaming enthusiasts, and welcome back to the Mediocre Modeler Show. As you guessed by the title, we've got another build review tonight, and that is going to be the Warlord Games M16 Multiple Gun Motor Carriage, the Meat Chopper. Um, as you all know, I've, I've reviewed both the McCompany B Models kit as well as the Warlord Games kit, so this is exciting for me to get to finally build this thing and show it off, because I... I've always kind of been a fan of this. Just anything bristling with guns that just brings all that DACA to the fight is always cool. So I'm very excited to get into this. So without any further ado, let's head on down to the bench and see how this bad boy goes together. All right, we are all set and ready to go in getting our M16 multiple gun motor carriage assembled. So I've taken a few preemptive steps here to just kind of get some things prepared ahead of time. Like I've gotten most of the parts cleaned off of their, their sprues with the exception of the headlight and headlight protector. Um, and I've done a few minor modifications. So I actually put a couple of pins up here in the front for our winch, just to strengthen that bond a little bit. I also scratch built a steering wheel and kind of worked out and dremeled out the uh, uh, footwell for the driver that I built out of a leftover figure from the Rubicon Jeep set. It doesn't sit perfectly like he's holding the wheel, but it fits in there well enough with a little bit of finagling. He fits in there pretty good. So it gives it a little bit more character. So I've also pre-drilled and installed a magnet for the turret just to keep that in there a little bit more securely. And so, yeah. Uh, well, we're going to do this in, uh, I think, two stages. So we're going to do the main hull, and then we'll do the turret separately. So let's go ahead and get started. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... I'm not going to do the winch first. I'm actually going to do the, the treads first. I was commenting to a friend the other day that I, I don't understand why they they haven't made this in plastic yet because they have plastic M3 half tracks. So they should just go ahead and get us a, a plastic M16. So the fit is not absolutely perfect. There's not really any good locating pins for the treads, but we're just going to kind of line those up about where we think they should be. And then we'll go ahead and get to gluing. As you can see, there's a little bit of casting defect there, but I'm not too worried about that. It's not going to hurt my feelings a whole lot. I just want to make sure that I'm getting this about as straight up and down as possible. As level as possible, and then make sure I kind of got it spaced about where I want it, which that doesn't look too bad. So about like this, and then make sure that we're still... Relatively straight up and down. There, you can get a little better angle here. Of how that is. And then we'll go ahead and give it a shot of accelerator. As always, make sure you have no super glue on your hands and don't get it anywhere near the accelerator because it will burn. Ask me how I know. The hard way. And then since we're going to be putting glue here, I'm just going to make sure I get all of that cleaned off um looking i mean I, I i could have pinned these i just didn't really feel like it and there's not much of a contact spot there so all right so on to our next one so same thing just get our glue on there and then we'll kind of fine tune it as the glue begins to set, but before it has set, so that's pretty close. No, it's not. That's a little too far forward, I think. Get that back just a little bit there. Yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. Our up and down looks fairly straight on there. How does it look there? Yeah, it looks like it's not quite as much space. Oh, actually, that's pretty close. I'd say those are pretty close. Close enough for government work anyway. I don't work for the government, but I do work for a company that administers a government program. 
So, all right, we got that accelerator on there. And that should sit fairly well. All right, so we'll go ahead and get our front wheels on here. You can see we've got these nice little divots here that are actually correspond with these little pegs on the wheels. So that makes it a little easier for us to line it up. Now, I'm not 100% sure exactly which side that uh, <laughs> the transfer case should be. I should have looked that up prior to doing this. I don't know particularly matters, but there will be some historical accuracy that don't appreciate it if it is the wrong way. Actually, it only seems to want to fit one way. Or that's just me being clumsy or slab-headed. Uh, actually, I think it fits better the... Oh, it fits a little bit... No, that's definitely cockeyed. And I need to check something here real quick. So we're just going to check. Okay, so my wheel arches are not even. Okay, so that explains that. But I think it did actually fit better this way. If anyone's looking close enough to tell that I've got that the wrong way, well, good for them. And it is just super glued, so it would be easy enough to swap it around if it's that big of an issue. Personally, for me, it's not, but for some people, it could be. No judgment here. So that's looking pretty good. We just That's kind of the thing. It's just, you know, I don't want it to be sitting all goofy, you know, wobbly. And that's actually not too bad. You got a pretty good... Pretty good squat there, so yeah, I like that. That's good. I'm just gonna leave this protective cap off. A little bit of accelerator there, help get those into place. And then go ahead and get our winch attached. So that's gonna be our top side. And I do have some, you can see I've got some holes drilled there. I had to drill a second one to actually make it fit properly as one does in the process of building go ahead and pop that bad boy on it's not an excellent hold but it's just it's enough extra that i feel more comfortable having pinned it and you can see it's not perfectly straight there but it does look fairly level yeah, definitely, I'm going to feel better that it's going to stay having pinned it as opposed to not having pinned it. So that is, I mean, the bulk of the build right there. We've got our base, essentially an M3 half track, obviously some variation, um, but yeah, so that's a good chunk of stuff done. So we've got our nice little jerry can here. It does have a flat backside, so that makes it a little bit easier to indicate what is supposed to go where. And I am just going to pop this bad boy right here. I don't know if that's really where it's supposed to go, but that's where I'm going to put it, and I'm going to be happy with it. So get that bad boy there. do that okay so now we do have our five seat backs to install shouldn't be too difficult and it, it does look as though there is a specific side so this looks like the padded part of the seat as you can see it's just kind of flat on that side Ooh, my hands are dirty I was using a grill earlier tonight so like that, our back, and this, our front. So we'll go ahead. And of course, only one of the seats will actually be occupied because the kit doesn't come with a driver figure. Hence, I had to make my own. And that's okay. Gave me a chance to do a little bit of conversion and work-ish. 
So that, let's put that one right there. Got our next one here. Tried to clean these up as best as I could ahead of time. Sorry about the focus, but I'm just applying glue to the part, not any major things you're missing. I swear, I promise. And then that one goes right there. And there are those little pegs back behind the seats. So then I think we're actually going to have three here in the cab. Um, I'm going to try putting one in behind the driver just to see if I can still make it fit. If not, then we'll pop it out and go without. Because he does settle into that seat fairly well. But I don't necessarily think we'll need it. And then that is the question. Does it actually go here? But we're going to put it up here. Come on. Yeah, we're going to... Maybe not exactly the correct place for it, but... You know, what is? Get one back there. Because I can't see in here anywhere else where there would be a seat, so I have to assume that... Because that looks does look kind of like a cushion. So I do kind of have to assume that that is the extra extra seat in the front there. Like, eh, it's a little bit off. Oh, no, get back. Get back to where you once belong. Get back to Joe. All right, so then our final seat. And then we got some of the more tricky-ish aspects of this particular portion of the build, I think, coming up next. But they should be okay. It's just going to be me trying to clean parts on camera, unfortunately. Okay. See if that will work. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll move it up. There is, you can kind of see this little wedge in there. I'm going to try putting it on top of that. Actually, why don't I just pick it up like this? I can just go like that. And then we'll just kind of see how well Mr. Man fits in there. With the seat back. Oh, he fits in there just fine. Just fine. And then he's got a cushion to rest on. You figure these things probably weren't running and gunning too much, so it's probably okay if he's, you know, sitting out, chilling, smoking a cigarette. And I just realized that's not quite... Eh, whatever. We'll live. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. Okay, so next we're going to be doing the windscreen, the armored windscreen, I guess. Um... And this does come in two parts. So I was kind of fiddling with this ahead of time. And if you notice, there's this little bar across the top. But then there's these two little edges. It tells you this is the back and this is the front. So that is definitely helpful when it comes to placing this piece. I'm kind of a fragile piece, to be quite honest. But it is what it is. It would be sweet if someone came out with a plastic kit of this. But the fact that there are two manufacturers out there for this particular kit is pretty sweet. So I'm not going to complain. And I've got both the kits, so I can have a second one if I don't like the way this one turns out. Or I could just strip this one and redo it. And that is not sitting quite right, but I don't think there is a way to make it sit right. No, I'd rather have it level and then have a little bit of a gap. Because this piece is going to basically be on top of it. You can see there's where, where the hinges are. And then this is going to sit open like that. Which again, pretty tenuous grip there. So I do have a piece of brass wire that I'm going to use to make some supports that it also would have had. Um, I-R-L, as my kids would say. Darn kids. And I should have done some more research as to how those supports actually should have looked. But that's not exactly how we do things 
around Mediocre Modeling Studios. Now the question is, am I getting that on there properly? Yeah, that's looking... That looks pretty good, I think. Let's see... I want that... Nope, nope, no, nope, don't drop on me, don't drop on me. So, yeah, come on. Is my glue still sticky? I know, this makes for excellent viewing, doesn't it? I'll break the fourth wall as much as I like, thank you very much. Okay, so just get that there, kind of hold it up. Okay. That looks fairly level. I like it kind of like that. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to need to cut this brass wire to fit. Now, I don't know if it should actually be like this or if it should be out like that. I'm honestly not sure. Um, something tells me this would almost be appropriate, and then I'll... I'll dig into it after the fact and then if I need to I can change it so I'm going to move my tweezers about where I think I need to cut and then I shall make my cut maybe there we go okay so that set that piece aside this is the piece we want to use uh oh there we go almost got away from me Cut that just a tiny little bit shorter. It's always good to cut just a, a hair longer than you need to, and then trim a little bit more as you go. Measure twice, cut once. In this case, measure once, cut multiple times to make sure you're getting the right length. Ah, still needs to be a little bit shorter. Let's see if I can't angle that cut just a little bit, make it fit just a tiny bit better. And that might almost have cut too much, but we'll figure it out and we'll make it work one way or the other, you know? That's what modeling is all about, you see? There we go, perfect. Kids these days with the hipping and the hopping. Five internet points to whoever can tell me where that comes from. All right. go oh yeah that looks cool that looks good I do want to kind of clean up some of that excess super glue before I accelerate this process it's been a long week folks I apologize but there's nothing I'd rather be doing on a Friday night to be quite honest with you all right we're gonna get a rough idea of where I want to cut. Even though this is for the other side, that might be too short. Yep, that is too short. All right, good thing I have got plenty of brass wire around here. Useful for so many modeling activities. So much room for activities. All right, we're still just a little bit long. Again, we'll cut less than we think we need to start and keep going from there. Ooh, that's close. I didn't lose. Yeah, whatever. This is a gaming piece after all, does not have to be perfect. It is an imperfect build to begin with. It's an imperfect kit, so the build will be imperfect as well, and that's okay. Because in the context of gaming miniatures, most of us aren't entering competitions. Some of us are. Personally, I don't like 
competitions, modeling competitions. Granted, I have entered a few. I have won some awards, and I was very proud of them. Oh, son of a gun. Well, that pin just went flying and is now lost to the carpet monster or to be stepped on later. Uh, that one's a little bit bent. Let's see. This one is relatively straight. Yeah, you don't want to step on a brass pin. <clears throat> Not fun. You don't want to get one in your finger either. Okay, this one just needs a little bit of a bevel to it, and I think that will be good. There we go. Now we check and check. Okay, that's good. And then we glue it glue. Oh, don't tell me my super glue goofed up on me already. super glue we really truly need it on that but that's how it goes you know that's how it goes oh, I'm gonna get in here just kind of get some of that excess glue off and get myself some free fibers in the process there that's all right accelerate that all right so now is probably going to be the most difficult part of this process because we've got to get these off of the sprue and cleaned up and keep them intact and unfortunately the top of this is sort of integral to the sprue from what i can tell i think from the way that those are modeled we'll go ahead and start with the headlights get that off See how that fits. Because you gotta have your, your headlights, your formation lights and stuff. And I'm not sure how much of this I actually should cut off. I think actually a decent amount. That'll do, pig. And come on now. Boy, this video sure is dragging on. That's okay. Nothing better to do. Well, maybe you folks do, but I certainly don't. One way to both relax and aggravate myself at the same time. Modeling. No better way to fight the effects of my blood pressure medication doing their job. I don't know where that little piece went, but we'll find it eventually, I'm sure. Alright. I'm going to have to do this like backwards now. Oh, the struggles of being one-handed or the other. That'll work. There we go. And chunk that right in there. Try and get it as straight as we can. Yeah, that's not bad. I'd say that's pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these clipped and cleaned up off camera, and then we'll be back to get those installed. All right, apologize if the camera angle changed a little bit. That's just how she goes. Okay, so we got these bad boys cleaned up off the casting gate, and we're ready to glue. So we'll go ahead and get a tiny little bit of glue on there. And maybe a little more than I want, that's all right. All right, then these have these nice handy little slots right here in front of the headlights, too, that they should pop into. 
should pop into. I said should pop into. Come on. Close enough. I wanted it mainly, you know, covering the headlight. You know, actually protecting the headlight like it should. Kind of a fiddly detail, but, you know, still. And that very clearly is not glued in sufficiently. So let's go ahead and fix that while we're at it. Boy, that's going to be fun to paint. I didn't realize uh, the difficulties that I'm going to have in painting that. Which is why I haven't glued the, the driver in, because it's going to make painting a wee bit of a challenge, honestly. Let's fix this just a little bit, and then we can get this back to the way it should be. Don't like yay. Good enough. Mediocrity at its finest, as we say. All right, let's see if this one goes just a tad easier. That would be much appreciated if it does. Hint, hint. All right, use the left hand. Great viewing angle, I know. That is not going to cooperate any more than its partner, is it? Oof, da. I wonder if... No, I want it to go this way. It's got some contours to it that would match the other side better. So let's just get it like that. And then Shazam. See, if that didn't work as planned, did it? Nope, it definitely did not. All right, we'll get... Blue remnants off of there. And we'll try this again. Yeah, get that close and residual. Yeah, that looks all right, honestly. I'm willing to be okay with that. Not perfect, but again, nothing ever is. Mediocrity at its finest as we say, and then our duder in his driver's seat. I'm ready to go for a drive, boss. All right, so there's the main hull all assembled. Um, turns out this is on the wrong side, but it is pretty freaking solid, so I'm not going to try and switch it. But, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. For a start, you know, he's sitting right over the top of that, but that's okay. A Warlord figure would be bigger anyway. All right, so I'm going to get everything prepped for the turret, and we'll come back to work on that. Just Here are all the components for, our, I believe it's the M45 turret, or Mark 45 turret. I'm not entirely sure. But I've got everything cleaned up. I've got a big old magnet in there, ready to go. So I've actually made some marks here on the side in pencil that, to indicate where I need to line these up. You can see that mark right there. Um, so that the guns are at the same upward angle when they're glued on. I've done my best to straighten these out. I uh, did not drill out the, the barrel ends. Probably should have, but I didn't. Um, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and get started on the turret. Start with our starboard. Well, I guess it's, it'd be right side. We're, we're not in the Navy here. We'll get that lined up and in there. And it does kind of slot in there pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, no, come on. Get in there and stay. Make sure we're getting contact with the glue. Might have to give that a little bit. Or maybe I should have used more glue. I'm not entirely sure. Because that does not feel like it's sticking particularly well. I'll give that a second, see if it falls off. We'll get the other side done. Make sure we, yeah, give it a healthy dosage of glue here. And I can very faintly see my indicator mark. Yeah, that side did not fit and stay the way I would have liked it. So, 
All right, we'll get that in there. This one, yeah, I think this side fit a little bit better. A little, a little more cooperative. So we'll just, well, we're getting absolutely minimal contact with the glue on that side, but we'll get this in there and we'll get it to stay. No worries, no worries. up about like that make sure we're getting that all the way in there the way that we want I'd say that's looking pretty good all right next up we need to do our ammo feeds for our guns. And you can see they've got these nice little holes there that fit these pegs on the side of our ammo feeds, which are pretty much the same either side. So I don't think there is a particular front and back in this case. So we can just go ahead and get these on. Again, you know, you really, if you wanted real secure you can pin these, but in my slowly advancing age, I'm tired of pinning stuff all the time. So I just kind of wing it and hope for the best. Hope that that chemical bond will hold. Definitely a, a mechanical bond is preferable, but you know, not always an option. Although I have pinned some pretty insane things in the past, magnetized some insane things. Magnetized a corn demon prince for 40k just a couple of months ago. That was fun. Turned out really well, though, to be completely honest. That was a commission job. That. Come on. Get that as close as we can to where we want it. Still not quite. That's good enough. Get those set in there. All right, now we can do the other side. I get the feeling these barrels are going to need some straightening out over time. Such is the nature of things. Just hope they don't break off. But if you remember from my uh, Company B models example, the, most of the barrels were short shot, so I'm going to have to replace them anyway. Which is why I saved all the 50 cals from my Rubicon Jeeps. Rubicon models jeeps. We have a Grand Cherokee, not a Rubicon. So that is. Come on now. Not wanting to set as quickly as I would like. I think I'm at the point where I need to get a new thing of glue. It seems like after over time they don't set as quickly as they do when they're fresh. That and it's all gunked up and everything, as it tends to do. But I would still rather buy one of these size bottles of Bob Smith than the, just the cheap little throwaway crazy glues and stuff. I just think they're easier to use. Alright, last one. Come on now, honey. Good enough. All right, I'm gonna check one thing and then I will be right back. Okay, so the last piece we're gonna install is actually gonna be our gun sight. Hey, get back here. Which is gonna go right like that. You can see it does have those flat spots to fit on there. My guns aren't quite perfectly in alignment with each other, but yeah. Again, only so much you can really do. Okay, so let me get this oriented properly here. Okay, and then, bada bing, bada boom. Is that, 
little cattywampus and it's not moving so there we go all right so i am actually going to leave the head separate for painting just because that's going to be a lot easier um, to paint that way and there we go there is the complete build of the warlord games 28 millimeter or 156 scale m16 mgmc the multiple gun motor carriage also known as the meat chopper so definitely a, a cool model um one that i'm i'm glad to have and glad to have a built one in the collection so yeah all in all it went together fairly well no major issues that couldn't be overcome but definitely a fun and cool looking kit you gotta admit that does look pretty cool with those quad 50s up there and there we have it folks the completed build of the m16 mgmc it's just fun to say mgmc or multiple gun motor carriage or meat chopper heck yeah so yeah great little kit i think you know fun little scale just a few little scratch details to kind of liven it up a little bit um i'm pretty happy with it um obviously not perfect but again how many times did i say that during the video you know nothing's perfect the kit's not perfect so the build doesn't have to be perfect so definitely pretty cool it'll be interesting you know when i do get around to playing how effective it actually is in game but you know that's not even that important because it's the rule of cool that's my favorite i mean that's how i build every wargaming army that i have is rule of cool and that's why i also probably very rarely win but that's not what it's about so i definitely hope you folks enjoyed that as much as i enjoyed getting to build this kit so now uh you can see see what the kit's like for yourself so if you folks do have any um, suggestions of what you would like to see a review on or a build review on, definitely let me know. If it's something that's maybe not too expensive, I could possibly look into uh, um, purchasing the item for myself and then doing a doing an out-of-box review, doing a build review, and then hopefully, like I'll be doing with this one, doing a uh, painting video as well. So thank you very much for watching. If you feel so inclined, please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, folks, may your... What do I say? May your paints be thin, <laughs> your brushes be pointy, and your dice be hot.